this unit deals with um, another element of electromagnetism, a really exciting one. It's about the production of electricity using magnetism. And um, it's exciting because there's so many things that you can apply and talk to students about. Look, there's a little um, a circular magnet in there, and if I can get it to move, there's a little coil. Um, it's magic. Um, I can get some electricity. And... That's what this unit is about. <clears throat> Before I show you some of the little um, tricks that I've developed over time when I come to teach a section, I just want to chat about um, an important element of your teaching as well is to give children um, an historical sense of some of these developments. And in this case over here, it was the work of Michael Faraday that was so important because he's the person who took Ulsted's um, notion that the electricity and magnetism were connected. And he found out a, a way in which electricity could be produced from magnetism. And if I was dealing with this with children, I'd give them a sense of um, how Faraday worked and what he did, but maybe also engage them in small groups, discussion, on a what, what I call a what-if exercise, where you get them to speculate, what if uh, Faraday never discovered how to produce magnetism, electricity from magnetism? Because that led on to the large-scale production of electricity, and of course that's had huge implications for our lives today. So get them to speculate a uh, little on what if electricity was never, we were never able to produce electricity on a large scale. How would life be different today? What implications does that have for our life? And it'll give them a sense of the importance of scientific development and so on. Anyway, let's get on to some of the fun stuff that I'd like to show you. And that is, how do you teach um, Faraday's laws? Well, it doesn't take a lot. For me, all it takes is a little tube um, some copper wire, we we'll get that from the old electro, auto electrician, or ask him for an old generator to take apart, and wind it to make a coil. If I take that coil, remember we've got um, to scrape the insulation off the ends, or else you're going to have a problem. To produce electricity, I'm going to connect that coil to a galvanometer, an instrument that can show that an electric current is being is flowing you and to that you then bring up your magnet and you can see the needle moves first one way then another depending on whether i'm bringing the magnet to or from it no movement no current right well that's faraday's that's an illustration of electromagnetic induction, how we induce an EMF. Faraday's laws is about how do we, what factors affect how big that EMF is. And we just need to look at, well, what are the variables? And in this case, how many coils are there? Well, if I produce more coils, does that make any difference? Let's have a look. Right, there are more coils there than there. Let's see what difference that makes. Oh yes, much bigger deflection. There's more e greater EMF that's being induced. Another variation is how fast am I bringing this magnet to it? If it's slow, it's only a small deflection. If I make it big, I get a much bigger. So that's another one. So, we know from Faraday's laws that the size of the EMF is dependent on the rate of change of flux linkage. All of these will help children to get to that point. Here's another one that one doesn't normally encounter in a textbook. Um, take an iron bolt and just simply put it through the center there. Let's see if that makes any difference. Wow, what a difference. And that's simply by putting in an iron core. So clearly, this iron core um, increases the flux linkage. And of course, we're changing that flux linkage as we move the magnetic field. Another variable is the size of the magnetic field. Let's have a look at what sort of deflection we get with this magnet. And we can see it goes roughly five units. 
let's add another couple of magnets. I'm going to have a slightly different magnetic field. Wow, it's almost doubled. So clearly the strength of the magnetic field is another variable. All of these together, collectively with the students, I'll wrap up, and wrap up into what we know as Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Ha, huh, I can hear you saying to me, well, that's all very well if I've got a galvanometer. And I know many schools don't have a galvanometer. Well, I've got an answer for you. You make your own galvanometer. And that's, very, that's not very difficult to do either. All you need is a little plotting compass and a bottle top and some wire because a galvanometer is nothing more than a compass, a magnetic needle in a coil of wire. And I've made one already here. I just simply place the little plotting compass inside the bottle top, stick it there in place with some press stick and just wind a coil of wire around it. We stick it so that the needle is lying exactly in line with that coil of wire. Let's take our coil and connect it to the galvanometer and we're ready to see if it works. Just remember that that compass is sensitive to any magnet that comes around here so therefore I make this wire quite long because I'm going to bring a very strong magnet towards this coil and as you bring it towards the coil, voila, you can see the compass needle moving the moment I bring it close there. Of course, put it inside um, your bolt and you get a much bigger deflection. Transformer, it's nothing more than what I've made here. You've got your primary coil and your secondary coil. And we can demonstrate that quite nicely to students. Connect the secondary coil up to your galvanometer and let's put current through secondary coil. Put an iron core through it just to make it more efficient and let's have a look at the needle. Quite clearly there's no connection between that coil and that coil. Um, if I now let current go through this primary coil, there goes the needle, there goes the needle. The moment current is now flowing, no movement. Disconnect, movement. So it's only when there's a change in current that I will get current switched on and off, on and off, on and off. You'll get your current being electricity being produced. So that's your simple transformer. The EMF changing flux in this, linking with that, producing your uh, um, current. Right, and then finally there's that very important part of your teaching, your lesson that you need to plan for. How do I make this relevant, make it real for the kids, help them feel excited about what they're studying? With electromagnetism generally is very easy. We started off with the wind-up torch. It's, it's got the ordinary magnet and coil in there. There's the old bicycle generator that fits onto your wheel which spins that and that generates alternating current. The old car battery charger, uh, your battery runs flat. What's in there? It's nothing more than a transformer. 220 volts through the primary coil, out of the secondary coil comes 12 volts to charge your battery up. Uh, computers, they use a battery charger. That's the same as that, in essence. Um, just reduce, that'll reduce the voltage and charge my computer up. We talked about the cell phone charger as well. There are many different um, items in everyday life that use this uh, form of electromagnetic induction. Finally, again, I invite you to send in any of your ideas. I've shared some of mine. Send them in to my email address and I'll find ways of putting them up and giving you acknowledgement for them. <laughs>